the Public Works Garage opened to the public for the first time in 2015. The inaugural open house was a hit with the kids. I think this is awesome! I can't believe I'm doing it! There's a lot of trucks. We have the keys. City employees had just as much fun. This is Tonka Land for them. This is basically the live version of the toy area in a department store. When you see a kid walk around smiling and laughing and running around looking at the new toys, it made it all worthwhile. Another change in the Public Works Department, a new city trash and recycling service was approved. Council members voted six to one to move forward. Public Works Director Carl Keel says the change will save many residents money while reducing truck traffic. We do have uh, seven licensed haulers and to collect trash that takes three trucks from each hauler. One for garbage, one for recyclables and one for yard waste. So there's the potential in a neighborhood that you might have uh, 21 vehicles on garbage day, which is quite a few. You move to organized collection and you reduce that down to three. So there is the potential to have a significant savings in the number of trucks that are, are in the neighborhood. Organized collection is expected to start next year. A longtime Bloomington business celebrated a big birthday in 2015. Donaldson celebrated 100 years. Well, I never knew him. My grandfather, Frank Sr.'s philosophy was, let's fix it. He and Bob Donaldson and many others kept Donaldson alive through World War I, the Great Depression, World War II, by designing products that fixed problems. Another milestone celebrated, the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. The city honored the anniversary with a program at Civic Plaza. The communications team also put together several videos telling the stories of people who benefit from the ADA. Yeah. Pretty awesome. There was a piece on Mikey Young. Mikey! Mikey! He volunteers with Parks and Recreation during the summer. <laughs> what do you like about it? All the kids and the staff. There was also a story on Bob Peters, an early champion for ADA. He fought hard to make signage the same from town to town. Every community had a different way of doing it, and I felt that uh, there should be some sort of continuity and consistency throughout the state and through the, uh, the help with the state senate um, we got uh, a bill testify, I testified a bill and we uh, developed a consistent and continuity throughout the whole state uh, which became Part again of the ADA. Shortly after this interview, Bob passed away. His wife was honored at the Bloomington ADA event. A new maintenance building opened up at Dwan Golf Course. It is not only more functional, but it looks good. It won the AIA Merit Award from the Minneapolis chapter of the Institute of Architects. The um, outer side uh, has a different kind of an architectural element to make it interesting to the eye. The slats that go uh, horizontally and the metalwork kind of blends in, um, giving the protection the building needs, but also giving it kind of a neat architectural look. And while we're on the subject of design, artwork was installed at various locations around Bloomington in 2015. Yeah! A few of the projects were part of the Creative Placemaking Initiative, an effort to make South Loop walkable, interesting, and distinctive. These projects are going to help to build a sense of community. They're going to provide people with an opportunity to stop and linger, uh, to experience something at more of a pedestrian scale than what people think about when they think about the South Loop right now. In 2015, there was a little box sauna at Radisson Blue, a walking theater performance at the Minnesota Wildlife Refuge, and a mural painted by Eric Pearson near the refuge and Cypress Semiconductor. And finally, a sculpture called Convergence installed at the roundabout at 28th and Lindau. That was done by Bloomington native James Brenner. I think bringing uh, art to the everyday world is uh, really important for me to, to have that be experienced in something that's normal uh, in our outdoor 
environment. While artwork isn't always something you expect to see outdoors, baseball fields are. And Herbeck Fields got a major makeover thanks to donations and volunteers from the Minnesota Twins Foundation and Toro. This complex uh, gets used a lot and they're certainly not terrible fields, but they um, were in some need of some TLC. There uh, were some grading issues and some just, you know, safety hazards with uneven ground and we're just going to fix all that. It's work the city planned to do over a five year period until the Twins and Toro went to the city and said, you know what, we can get this done in two days for you. So we're going to get it done in two days and um, free the city up to, you know, be able to do so many more projects that are needed in the city. Along with restored fields, Work began to restore a historical Bloomington structure. The old Cedar Avenue bridge is being rehabilitated. The bridge won't be finished until November 2016. The spring of 2017 may be more likely. Crews have run into some problems that caused delays.